So the moment that we've been waiting for within the Halo show for a season and a half at this point now has finally happened. It is the fall of Reach with episode four. And what it feels like for almost every episode of season two of the Halo show, there are some amazing parts that really deserve praise, but also some parts that make you really question like what made them come to that decision when it comes to writing this show. And there are some big decisions that were made within this episode that are going to be changing the entirety of the show and the rest of this season. So if you guys enjoyed these type of videos, make sure you tap like and subscribe for more Halo content and let's get right into those details. I will be breaking up this video in the first half being spoiler free, second half being spoiler. So if you just want to cut to all the juicy details, well, you just know where to go. So episode four picks up right where episode three left off. The entire episode is just a one gigantic battle scene which looks amazing actually there's some really cool like hand-to-hand -hand combat some vehicle combat a little bit mixed in with the, a lot of gunfire as well and some really great action scenes honestly i really enjoyed the cinematic take they did like one shot style you can definitely tell that they hid the transitions between the different scenes but they did it so well that it looks like all one continuous shot which i personally really enjoy the action within this episode is actually really well choreographed honestly it deserves a lot of praise especially for how realistic they made it feel like when you see chief and other characters fighting against like cgi elites it looks like they're actually fighting against them which is really difficult to do and really does deserve some praise you really do get a sense of danger within this episode that really not a whole lot of people are safe and you do see some consequences of that happening but on the other hand like i said there's always great things and bad things with every episode and the bad things were a lot of the decisions that were made that put these characters into these situations because their decisions within the situations and the dialogue makes a lot of sense. It's actually really well done. But the fact that they are in these situations in the first place doesn't really make a lot of sense and really ruins the experience. I'll go more into the spoiler things later in this video about why that is. The dialogue between Soren and Halsey within this episode is actually really well done. Some interesting revelations happen for Soren when it comes to this episode that do make sense when it comes to Oni and their practices and things like that. I will warn you that you do see Chief without his armor throughout the entirety of the episode in the middle of a battle to save Reach. We'll get more into that later. I'm just gonna add to the whole thing where I'm feeling like Soren's kid, right? Kessler, I swear to God, he wears a Spartan helmet more often than actually Master Chief does within the show. And there's a crucial moment that happens within episode four that makes you go like, oh yeah, humans are taking it back. This is gonna be a badass part. But then you get that feeling completely taken away from you, which is incredibly frustrating to watch as a Halo show. Overall though, I will say I was entertained. I enjoyed the episode. Questionable decisions were certainly made, but overall I was captivated with every scene felt really important i really wanted to jump in and just kind of see what happened next which in this episode there was no quan no rebel story arc which is probably why i was so captivated with the show okay so let's get into the spoilers of episode four the big thing is that Ackerson took the armor sets they took away <laughs> i can't believe i'm saying this but Ackerson took away the mjolnir armors for the spartan twos of chief vanek and Riz, which Kai is nowhere to be seen within this episode, I think for reasons we'll see out later within this season, basically sentencing them to death, which uh, is like, I think I get it because Ackerson is gonna be in charge of making the Spartan 3s, right? And he probably wants the Spartan 3s to be like the only viable Spartans, I guess. But the thing is that like you have Master Chief. This guy is not just another Spartan. He's a symbol of humanity. You see him within billboards on Reach showing case like how awesome the Master Chief is. You get to play as him in a video game apparently within Reach. So you're just gonna sentence this character to death to stay on Reach with and take his armor set? Like you would take him with you. There's probably some really significant learnings Chief and those other Spartan 2s can give to the Spartan 3s. I have an excellent knowledge transfer to make the Spartan 3s even better. But no, it's... <laughs> But no, Ackerson takes away the Mjolnir armor sets, which is what I was talking about earlier in the episode, where like, they go back to Fleecom, they go like, let's get our suits on, let's kick some ass. Sorry, the armor is gone. And I'm just like, that just blue balled the entirety of the viewing experience of this episode. Like, imagine like, Chief gets his armor and it's like, okay, now we're here to really kick some ass. That would have been freaking awesome. And I would have been just like on the edge of my seat the entire time. But no, you have to see Chief still without the helmet, this time completely without the armor now. Again, a decision to me that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. A big thing is that we do see Captain Keys sacrifice himself within this episode. Apparently like the fuel lines were attached when this escape pod was trying to get out and he goes out to detach everything. And then he gets surrounded by a bunch of jackals. And then he tells Perez to leave, which ignites the gas that's still kind of flowing out of the entire 
Bay area, which means that Captain Keys dies before you even get a chance to see a Halo ring. So clearly that whole like story arc of Keys being assimilated by the Flood on the Halo ring to then give the Flood knowledge of what the UNSC have and things like that, just that's completely gone, which obviously the show's gone in its own direction. Uh, that probably wasn't going to happen in the first place. We do know that the last episode of the season is called a Halo. So maybe there might be a teaser to like the flood, maybe at the end of the season, but we'll have to wait and see. I always felt like within the show that Captain Keys, which is now apparently Admiral Keys, doesn't really play a huge role within the show. He definitely feels like a character that would be a meaningful character to kill off and not a crucial character that has plot armor like we see Master Chief. Though I did enjoy his character. I thought he played Keys very well, especially within this episode was the most keys I think we've ever seen within the, se the series itself and he did an amazing job the speech that he gives within the episode is fantastic there's a scene within episode four that all these marines are gathered around keys's speech right and he brings it and then keys brings master chief up on stage but no one recognizes that it's actually master chief because he's not wearing the armor and the helmet until someone says hey that's master chief and everyone goes oh master chief oh my gosh master chief but like if you had the armor on there with Master Chief wearing the helmet and the armor set, people would know that's Master Chief. And at the end of the episode, we see a really cool fight scene between Chief and that Arbiter that they have within the show. It's not the Arbiter that we all know and love. It's a different character, but it's an Arbiter. And they do this really awesome like 1v1 fight scene that's super cool. And then an Elite just kind of like plasma shoots Master Chief and he gets down. The Arbiter that's there gets really pissed off because it's not like an honorable fight. Kind of ruins the whole situation slices that elite's head off I, like i thought that was pretty hilarious and pretty awesome as well since it wasn't like an honorable fight he still goes to kill chief while he was down until mckee says stop so it confirms that yes mckee is actually alive and not some apparition that chief has seen and things like that which again i don't understand how the hell mckee is alive Maybe they cloned her and saved her essence and something like that. There's going to be space magic involved and it's going to be really freaking lame. So there's a pause within the scene between McKee, the Arbiter, and Chief where Vanna grabs a needler, starts shooting at the Arbiter. A uh, Blamite shot gets lodged into the armor of the Elite and then he pulls it out and just stabs Vanek right in the chest with it. Blows up killing Vanek. Sure would have been nice to have that armor set, huh? Yeah. Though if Vanek was going to die in any kind of way, it would be something like that. Of course, having the armor on would probably save him in that situation, or at least, you know, not let him die. But if he was to die, it would be in battle against key characters like the Arbiters within the show, saving Master Chief and McKee being there as well. So it kind of made sense. I just hate to see Vanek go because he's like the one charismatic character or one charismatic Spartan within the entirety of the show. Like, especially within this season, there were plenty of lines where like it actually made you laugh which the show definitely needed some levity when it comes to the situations in, in the character dialogue it's all so serious that's why like in the original halo games you had characters like sergeant johnson to help kind of lighten the situation up a little bit oh and this week in halo infinite vanek's helmet is the uh, weekly ultimate reward so uh you know rest in peace you know in memory kind of thing oh and the arbiter and mckee take cortana with them which is like i'm just so surprised that like everyone gets leaves and gets killed or gets killed and but leaves cortana back at where they left her like that would be like priority one is take cortana for how important she is to the halo story arc and also within the show as well i felt like all the people downstairs and like captain keys even being like oh wait did we grab cortana did we forget her like no that wouldn't have happened it's just the situation again a situation like that didn't make a whole lot of sense but the scene itself was cool and well done again it's a current theme within this show that what happens within the scenes is awesome the dialogue's good but the fact that they were in these situations in the first place it doesn't make any sense but yeah like the big thing with the armor being taken away is that that means that we're going to be seeing chief without the armor without the helmet probably for episode five possibly even episode six like he's gonna get back eventually right but like we're gonna see more episodes of him without the helmet without the armor and it's just gonna be feeling more like just like a sci-fi military thing rather than like master chief right because that armor and this helmet that's chief's identity to the general viewing audience that's why people want the helmet and the armor on it's just so infuriating we're officially through the halfway point of season two so again if anything major happens i'll definitely talk about it on the channel here this is a huge episode within the halo series in general so i feel like i need to jump in and talk about it so make sure to catch you guys later in the next episode